I've decided to embrace self-supported riding for the first time and take on some of the most rugged terrain a gravel bike can handle. This is the Brecon Beacons in South Wales and I'm traversing them with a bivvy bag and a sleeping bag attached to my bike. It's been a wonderful experience but it hasn't always been easy. The weather has proved almighty and I'm on a stretch of track dubbed the road to hell currently, which is proving rather a handful. But to tell the whole story, we're gonna have to rewind a few days to when I was blissfully unaware of what lay ahead. Oh. The main elephant in the room with this whole trip is my total lack of experience camping. I've never actually done it before. But never mind, I bought a sleeping bag, blow up mattress and a bivvy bag. Oh, and a gas stove. No idea what to do with any of them, but that's what this trip is really all about. I wanna show you that you can give these sort of adventures a go, even if you are a total newbie like me. Oh my God, this bike weighs a ton. <laughs> kit ever, I don't actually know where I've packed my kit. Just been rushing and getting everything in and I'm hoping for the best. First steps into the wilds, leaving the city of Bath. Just need to get on the bike. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Adrenaline rush to start things off. I've got that fresh feeling. I'm going on an adventure and I'm going bikepacking all by myself. I've been yearning to do it for so long and this time I've just gone, yes, I'm out, I'm doing it. And this is it, the first off-road section. So my chosen route has been planned on commute. I've selected a multi-day kind of trip, multi-day event and um, that's kind of all I've done really, I've <laughs> just put start and finish in. I've put a few points of interest on the way and then I've gone for it. I've selected mountain biking because I want to go a little bit off-road and I'm on my gravel bike and I want to get a sense of this landscape, this country in a way that I haven't done before. First, I need to make it close to Abergavenny and set up camp for the night. About 70 kilometers to go. This road is going to be slow going, so better crack on. We'll first make it out of, out of England and into Wales across the Severn Bridge. I've had to put my pot inside my pannier because it was getting shit in it. I don't want to have my coffee in the morning. Okay, so about halfway through um, first day's riding, first evening's riding really. I made it 40 kilometers. I made it to the river to the River Severn and the Severn Bridge, which is carrying me over it and towards Wales. As things are gonna get much tougher from here, I feel. Enjoying it while it lasts. So 10 kilometers away from the campsite for the night and then um, I got really hungry. <sighs> Ran out of options for food, so I've got a lovely kebab, which is actually really, really nice. Um, I'm wolfing it down because I haven't got long until the campsite closes. It's a wild campsite. Um, and the owners, bless them, have said, I've got to be there before nine. So I'm kind of running out of time now. You wolf this down, <sighs> then bed down for the night. The steepest hill to finish off the day. Generally having to walk up this one. Regretting 
stopping for that kebab now. To cut a long story short, the sun is setting and then um, I got hopelessly, hopelessly lost. I ended up going down a mountain bike trail the wrong way, uphill, had to push the bike, um, trying to get to my campsite in time. And I'm late, so they shut the doors, there's no one there. I've come into the woods, um, cause that's my only choice now really. I've got about 10 minutes of daylight left. Time to get my bivy bag set up and uh, bed down for the night. Lovely view though. My legs are cut asunder from that mountain bike trail. I literally only did this with Jesse in the living room as practice. I may be a while. Okay, so I've made camp, I've bedded down for the night, a bit of an update for you. It's taken me an hour and 10 minutes to erect a tarp. And I've accidentally spilt my pot noodle. I accidentally spilt my pot noodle all down my bag, so it's everywhere. It's like my, my um, God knows why I decided to put pot noodle in my essentials bag, but it's gone all over everything. One more thing, I wish my sleeping bag was a bit bigger. My feet are just jammed at the end, end like, I don't know why they don't make sleeping bags bigger, I bought an XL. Right, night night. <laughs> 6 a.m. Um, actually, slept remarkably well. I stink of pot noodle. Chicken ramen flavour. Beautiful morning. Very lucky. Time to make some coffee and uh, get cracking on day two then. Things are taking a bit of a turn. I'm currently trying to get over the gap, which is a pretty high mountain bike trail uh, going close to Penny Van, the highest mountain in Wales. So supposedly the path I'm on now will cut across that. I see Penny Fan on the left and Fanny Big on the right. Fanny Big recently been demoted to a hill rather than a mountain. So Fanny Big, is Fanny Small. Um, either way, it's quite a big challenge for me. Okay, I've made it to the top of the gap. I persevered. Real tough going actually, mostly walking, pushing the bike, just uh, tough terrain, real big rocks, and it was, it was pretty unrideable with all my bags on. Made it to the top though, it's a brilliant feeling. Goodbye, Fanny Big! Oh my goodness gracious, this is sketchy. I made it back to a road. Oh my gosh. I was up there for nearly two hours. <laughs> oh, right, time to descend down properly on some road and get some lunch. <sighs> I am being extremely lucky with the weather as well. This was supposed to be a washout today, as well as weather warnings. So far, so good. Spoke too soon. Here's the rain. Oh Heavy. Oh, campsite for the day. Well, the night, actually. I'm already getting a bit delirious. Day two's ride took me six and a half 
hours to complete, moving time that is, and I only covered 78 kilometers, which just shows how tough the terrain has been and how slow I've been going at times walking my loaded bike. Luckily though, I've made porridge for dinner. Very kind of the farmer to let me stay in his field. A lot of sheep about, They're very loud. It's gonna be um, the soundtrack to my sleep tonight. Ah. Don't want to speak too soon, but um, I think I'm getting the hang of this this camping malarkey. Helped tonight that I gave myself a bit more time to get ready and set up set up base. Um, I could kind of sit and enjoy it for a little bit before the sun went down. Because last night I was rushing around in a bit of a flap. Blue skies, well dark blue skies. It was night um, and no wind. So hopefully that remains for the rest of the night. Have a good kip. I don't know if it's supposed to be this easy. Right, time to go to sleep. Like a cat with nine lives, I awake to a dry morning on day three, once again avoiding a soggy night's sleep. However, the powers that be here at GCN thought it was probably a good idea to send someone to check up on me. That job fell to cameraman Nick, who quite luckily loves chicken ramen noodles. Oh, do you smell the chicken ramen? Strong, isn't it? Oh, it was cold last night. I was busting to go to the toilet in the middle of the night. And I literally had my bivy bag done up full, my sleeping bag done up full, and I couldn't get out in time. I was starting to panic, holding on to needing to go to the toilet. And I only just about made it, so that, that's good. Otherwise, it would have been a bit of a disaster. But it is time to get going, pack up camp for the last time, and head towards Swansea for the day that I've been looking forward to the most, actually. This one's going to be good. Oh, first coffee. Right, that's camp packed up for another night. Time to get into the day's riding and leave the sheep behind. Big one this now. Okay, day two is well underway. We're about 30 kilometers in. However, hit a slight kind of mishap in the fact that I've made a few wrong turns. I was actually heading towards a live firing range, which isn't the best look really. Um, and I'd have been hard to miss on that, that range too. So I had to turn back, do quite a big detour. When we get back off, off road, we'll be joining Sion Helen that ancient Roman road and the road to hell. And this is it. San Helen, the ancient Roman road which divides Wales from north to south. And I finally reached it on my journey, taking on the final little part towards Swansea. And I'll tell you what, I'm nervous because I don't know what the terrain on the surface is gonna be like. And we've made slow progress this morning already. So I'm hoping for not too much hiker bike, otherwise it's gonna be a late arrival in Swansea, but this is really where the route comes alive. This is the bit I have been looking forward to on this whole trip, and I can't wait to get into it properly. 
Oh, the legs are still feeling it a little bit. That must be said. Wow, we have a climb on our hands. When the Romans invaded Britain in 43 AD, they built a network of roads to navigate the country. Now, many have since been absorbed by the countryside, but San Helen, which we're on now, is one which still remains. Many of its route is still contested, but this final section we're about to take on to Swansea is kind of firm, firmly believed it is the correct route. And this section I'm on now is called the Road to Hell, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know why, I researched it quite a lot. My own thoughts is because the terrain is absolutely brutal. I am struggling on it now. But if anyone else knows why it's called the road to hell, please let us know in the comments. Humbling though, humbling to think of all those Romans 2000 years ago using these tracks, whereas we are on modern equipment. <sighs> Traversing those very same routes in our own way. Oh, I'm gonna have massive back muscles after this. Massive, I'll be on, I'll tell you what, I'll be on the cover of um, some men's health, men's magazines. Did you hear that, Stacey? More sheep. Have you noticed my biceps? They have been growing. So we have about 40 kilometers to go. So far we've covered 68K in four hours 45. So slow going and San Helen has proved pretty cruel at times. Plenty of hiker bike. The views are just spectacular. This is a spectacular trail and route. Gonna get there in the end. You won't get me San Helen. Well you will if you puncture me, but I haven't come this far to get wet feet right to the last hole oh, I have. Ah, wet feet. <laughs> ah! So, San Helen has opened up a bit, got a bit smoother, and we're on perfect gravel for the bikes we're on, which is just a boost to the spirits because we were really getting absolutely just shattered on that rough section back there. So it feels so nice to be able to push on the pedals again, up the speed and eat into the kilometers because Swansea beckons and the finish is getting so close now. Woo! Come on! We've nearly made it. Oh, you just heard that noise. It's the sound of the gate closing on that section of San Helen. <laughs> I found Tarmac! I've never been so happy to see a road. With the light starting to fade and the worst of San Helen over with, finally the terrain started to improve and the pace lifted. It was time for one final push and the final run in towards Swansea and the finish point of this wonderful adventure. Oh, and that's it. The adventure is over. Made it to Swansea. My final stop off. It was an incredible experience. I think the last 20 kilometers after being on San Helen descending down to here, I was pretty, uh, pretty shattered from that road. So in the end, we rode 116 kilometers today, just under eight hours. Average speed, 14.8 kilometers an hour. It was slow going. There was, a, there was a lot of walk in there. 2,000 meters of elevation gain as well. So 
solid, solid day in the saddle, 290 kilometers in total overall for the trip, but it wasn't the stats that counted, it was just the magic of being out there. But it was an incredible experience. I absolutely loved trying camping for the first time and carrying everything on my bike with me and bike packing in such a manner. I can't wait to do it again. And I'm already planning routes in my head about where I'm gonna go next and do. But if this has inspired you, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you're thinking about giving it a go yourself and you're not quite sure, maybe, you know, taking the plunge, go for it, do it. It's the best thing you will ever do. But right now, I need to find a train home. Or maybe I'll just ride home. I haven't had a shower in three days, so one more day won't matter, will it? Thanks for watching, everyone.